What could be more emotional than receiving a lifelong sentence when you're still a child? Your whole life will be spent in an unfriendly cell. Terribly daunting, isn't it? But the actions of these kids correspond to it. I will show you the most emotional reactions of teenagers to the pronouncement of sentences. And in the end, I will show you a girl who organized a murder with a robbery, paying other children participants only $50 each for candy. So let's start with Shondell Jackson. Here are the scenes from the court of Milwaukee County, where he is being sentenced for the murder of a university student. According to reports, 18-year-old Jackson and his friend were choosing their victim when they saw Nathan Potter leaving a bar. His 21-year-old victim was a student at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. The guys pursued him, attacked, and demanded money. Learning that Potter had no cash, Jackson shot him, leading to his death. It is officially reported that Jackson fled to Mississippi the day after Potter's murder. Jackson's uncle reportedly gave police a tip about his whereabouts, leading to his arrest. In court, you can see Jackson gesturing towards the victim's family, and as he is escorted out of the courtroom, he smiles at them. Moments before the sentence is pronounced, Jackson's mother tells the court that she first heard about the murder on TV and even cried, thinking she raised a murderer. I had a clue that my child had anything to do with it. My son is not a monster. He, he is not a monster. Now Jackson has apologized for his actions. I apologize for what I did. Please don't take my life away. When the judge announced a lifelong sentence without the possibility of parole, Jackson had a real emotional outburst. Upon Jackson's arrest, one of his relatives can be heard shouting towards the victim's family. In the end, Jackson is now serving a lifelong sentence without the possibility of parole. His friend pleaded guilty to being an observer in the murder and was sentenced to only 12 years in prison. But believe me, this is not the most emotional reaction and the cruel child among those I will tell you about today. And this is Dylan Shoemaker in Buffalo, New York court. He is at a hearing for second-degree murder after being found guilty of killing a 23-month-old child at the age of 16. Why did he do that? I'll tell you now. Shoemaker was babysitting his girlfriend's child while she went to work that evening. He was at home in Springville, living with his parents. Late in the evening, Shoemaker beat the child, and as a result of the injuries sustained, the toddler died. Later, Shoemaker was arrested and charged with the murder of the infant as well as with child abuse. Shoemaker, in his own words, tried to get the child to stop crying and didn't want to harm him. The child died accidentally. Do we believe that? Well, the jury didn't believe him either, and Shoemaker was found guilty of second-degree murder. Watch closely as Shoemaker enters the courtroom. Even before he manages to sit down at the defense table, he starts crying and apologizing to everyone. I didn't mean to kill Ashley. I really didn't. You really think I did that? I didn't mean to hurt him. When Shoemaker was awaiting his trial, he was on the phone with his mother, and this conversation was recorded. What did Shoemaker say to his mother on the phone? I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. And the judge read this verdict in the courtroom, after which the boy burst into tears again. I can't take back what was done. I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. Later, Shoemaker was sentenced to the maximum punishment, which provides for an indefinite prison term with a maximum term, life's imprisonment. The court set a minimum term of 25 years, but the sentence was later changed from 18 years to life imprisonment. Rachel and Shayla appeared in court charged with the murder of their friend when they were only 16 years old. Why did they do that? Their plan was to hide knives under their clothes and attack Skylar at the agreed-upon moment. In Star City, West Virginia, Cha and Eddie were friends with 16-year-old Skylar Nye. According to reports, Shayla and Shayla decided they no longer liked Skylar, so they planned to kill her. Shayla, Eddie, and Rachel carried out this plan together. They inflicted stab wounds and killed Skylar. After Cha's confession, both teenagers were arrested. Cha agreed to plead guilty to second-degree murder in exchange for cooperation in the case. I'm so sorry, I didn't know if there is a right way to make this apology because there are no words to describe the guilt and remorse I feel every day for what I did. I caused pain to the family and to those who loved Skylar. I caused pain to my parents and brought shame to my family. 
May God bring eternal peace to Skylar and the entire Nye family. After reaching a deal with the prosecutor, the judge announces Cha's sentence. Rachel Cha by the court, her sentence to serve punishment and the prison of the state of West Virginia for 30 years, but you will have the opportunity for parole in 10 years. Eddie had a similar decision. By the court, you are sentenced to serve punishment and the prison of the state of West Virginia for the rest of your natural life. This sentence is technically merciful, making you eligible for parole after you have served a certain number of years. This is Brandon Spencer in the Los Angeles County Court, where he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. The guy staged a mass shooting. On Halloween night, 19-year-old Spencer attended a crowded party on the campus of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Suddenly, shots rang out and panic ensued. Everyone scattered, some in horror, others hiding. According to reports, Spencer also fled, but he was stopped in a parking lot half a mile from the scene where the police detained him for questioning. A few days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. Four people were injured, but fortunately, no one died. The shooting resulted from a conflict between Spencer and a member of a rival gang. I'm not a bad person, but I made a mistake, Spencer said. He maintained his innocence throughout the process, but the jury disagreed and he was found guilty of second-degree attempted murder. Nearly 50 family members and friends filled the courtroom as the judge pronounced the sentence. Court officers had to restrain Spencer as he banged his head against the table. Spencer was sentenced to 40 years to life imprisonment for the four counts of attempted murder, but let's move on. This is Marteza Fuller in the Kenosha County Court, Wisconsin. He's accused of murdering his ex-girlfriend and attempting to murder her mother. According to reports, 15-year-old Marteza Fuller broke into his ex-girlfriend's house armed with a gun. When his ex-girlfriend was listening to music in her bedroom, he shot her. The mother came out of her room and confronted the shooter, who reacted with two shots. The mother survived the shooting and identified Marteza Fuller to the police. The guy claimed his innocence, but the jury disagreed. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree murder, the court said. After they found Fuller guilty on three counts, he showed some emotions for the first time in court. Although even during his sentencing, Fuller continued to assert his innocence. In moments before being sent to prison for life, he made a statement to the court, I want to write this to express my sincere apologies to this family with whom I once spent time in love. I truly regret the pain you all have gone through, but more importantly, the loss of my ex-girlfriend Kaylee, whom I also loved. But I must continue to stand by my innocence because I am innocent, and I hope that you all can eventually see in your hearts that I'm not the person the media has portrayed me to be. The judge pronounced the sentence, I've no reason to believe you on your word to believe that you will never commit such acts again. Therefore, in the interest of protecting society, considering the seriousness of these actions, the court obligates you to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Fuller listened to this silently without any remorse. Terrible, isn't it? And what about a suicide who decided to take her friends along? This is Mackenzie Chirilla. She's only 17 years old and she has been found guilty of murder. How so? She caused a car accident that killed her boyfriend and his friend. Mackenzie decided that death was her ultimate goal that day. It wasn't just reckless driving, it was intentional murder. Shirella's boyfriend, Dominic Rosso, and his friend, Devin Flanagan, were in the car when she crashed into the side of a commercial building outside Cleveland at a speed of 100 miles per hour. Both men died at the scene, and Shirella survived. Sounds like fate's mockery. Prosecutors argued that the teenagers had toxic relationships, and she threatened her boyfriend, threatened his property, and reportedly even broke into his house, according to friends. She deliberately caused the accident because she wanted to kill her boyfriend and his friend was just a random victim. The prosecutor said the intent was obvious when you see the video. You see how she behaves very calmly, turns right, and then all the evidence points to her immediately stepping on the gas and crashing into the building at 100 miles an hour. I believe this really demonstrates to us that it was not accidental. In the days leading up to the accident, she allegedly traveled the same route to plan the crime. What verdict did the court announce? On one count, the court finds the defendant Mackenzie Sharilla guilty of the murder of Dominic Russo. On count two, the court finds Mackenzie Sharilla guilty of the murder of Devin Flanagan. After which, Sharilla was given a chance to speak. I'm so deeply sorry. I hope one day you can see I would never let this happen or do it on purpose. I wish I could remember what happened. I'm just so sorry. 
I'm heartbroken. To which the judge stated, there are no medical reasons that could explain this as an accident. An unsuccessful suicide attempt is not a defense for murder. There is a very high likelihood, Mackenzie, that you will spend the rest of your life in prison. She was sentenced to 15 years in life imprisonment for each of the murder charges to be served concurrently. This is Jeremy Goodale and Willard Miller, both 16 years old, and they're both accused of murdering their Spanish teacher at a middle school. According to reports, the motive for the crime was a bad grade. Petty, isn't it? Miller and Goodale attended Fairfield School in southeastern Iowa, where Noema Graber was their Spanish teacher. After Miller received a poor grade, he and his friend Goodale planned to kill her. They ambushed her as she walked in the park and attacked her, hitting her in the back of the head. They then dragged her into the woods and beat her to death with a basketball bat. After that, they attempted to hide her body. Later, both boys were arrested and court documents claim that a witness familiar with Goodale showed law enforcement Snapchat messages indicating their involvement in the murder. Goodale subsequently pleaded guilty and testified against his best friend Miller. He testified that he realized Miller intended to kill Mrs. Graber and after that, Goodale pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. Here are Goodale's words regarding his crime. I've thought a lot about what to say and I sincerely regret it. Every day, I dream of going back and stopping myself. I can't understand how I could lose someone so horribly close. The judge delivered a harsh sentence. The defendants are to be sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole in 25 years. Goodale got even luckier. He was given life with the possibility of parole in 35 years. Although judging by the footage, it didn't seem to phase him much. Jennifer May from Pinellas, only 19 years old. She was arrested on charges of first-degree murder. When she was 15, she became very famous because of memes and reports about her unusual hiccups. She was initially even called the Hiccup Girl, but all that ended when her hiccups stopped. The media lost interest in her until she was arrested. She was accused of orchestrating a robbery with victims she met online. According to reports, she recruited her then-boyfriend Lamont Newton and another friend, Lauren Rafer, to help rob the victims. May met a 22-year-old man she had met online and lured him into an empty house, where her two friends robbed and shot the man. They were paid $50 for the robbery and murder. May, Rafer, and Newton lived together, and the police didn't immediately catch onto this young gang. When May was first arrested, she was in jail and was talking on the phone with her mother where she confessed to her involvement. And this conversation was recorded. May was found guilty of first-degree murder. Here are the sentencing scenes. Please approach the bench, Miss May. The court finds you guilty of first-degree murder. Miss May, and sentences you to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. You have 30 days to file an appeal. Her accomplices, Rafer and Newton, were also found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. It's evident that the girl broke down in tears, realizing she would spend her entire life behind bars. Next feelings battled within me as I prepared for this video like a child losing their life entirely, yet they deserved it. If you are interested in this topic and want a second part, Subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.